everybody beats Syracuse, says the sign, even if they cannot spell it correctly. Tell me. 13 consecutive wins for Georgetown. That streak is in jeopardy. Their record overall 14 and 2. Syracuse at 9 and 4. Georgetown rated number 5 in the basketball writers poll, 7th in one wire service poll, 8th in the other. Well, the four losses by Syracuse are, are really not the whole story. They lost by two to St. Joe, one to Fordham, one to Villanova. They've lost uh, three games by a total of four points. And the this Villanova a, game was overtime. Yes, and this is a very good basketball team. And playing at home, they are virtually unbeatable. As Georgetown puts the ball in play, Karens quickly picks up his fourth foul. So now Karens, Sanifer, and Hawkins all have four. Syracuse. Ewing has scored only four points, equaling his season low. Boston College held him to four earlier. And he stays at four, but the rebound comes to Sleepy Floyd up in a crowd off the glass, will fall, and a whistle as Ewing tries to put it back up. A Syracuse foul again. The Orange are now over the limit, and one more in Georgetown will also be. Well, right now, the breaks and the momentum. Eric Sleepy Floyd going right over Ron Payton. The ball hits the iron. Ewing is right on top of it. The foul is on Leo Routens, who is very slender, not an exceptional jumper. And that's four on Routens, but well, it's going to be a question of depth. Ooh, North Stewart's Tigers are cooking. They win rather easily over Louisville and justify that number two national ranking. Leo Routens, the Canadian, the transfer from Minnesota, now has his fourth foul, but he can't hold up. He's got to play all out. 20 left. Ewing again at the line. And again he misses. And again Georgetown rebounds. Hancock pulling it down. That's not luck. That's hustle. Hustle and a long carom. Hancock can't cut it to one. And this time it's Karen's clearing the board. They fire it ahead for Santa for on the run and a whistle. He traveled. The call is a travel. Beheim says he was hit in any event. The pass probably shouldn't have been thrown. There's the fly pattern. Sanifer in traffic trying to outrun Gene Smith, and that's very difficult to do. I didn't see a foul. Really, it was an almost impossible play to catch and be under control. Here's Sleepy Floyd and Eric Smith. Again, doing in the game, and Syracuse packing in the 2-3. This is the way Seton Hall kept it close on Wednesday night, just packing in and defied the outside shot. Eric Smith off the glass to cut it to one at 64-63 and up his total to 12. And that wasn't even an outside shot. He just got right into the paint. Bruin posting up with Floyd, who has four. He gets inside of him, and Syracuse goes back up by three. Floyd gambled, and Bruin made him pay. If Georgetown stays man for man, I don't think anybody in the medium category can stay with Tony Red Bruin. 13 points for him. That one won't fall for Georgetown. And now, trailing by three are the Georgetown Hoyas. But Syracuse obliges them by throwing it away. Coming up next on Sports World. The fight and then some golf. Sleepy Floyd. Boy is down three. He can't cut it to one. Can Ewing? Yes. 66 65. Syracuse with 145 on the clock. Routens pegs it up to Bruin. Red Bruin was fouled as he went off. Oh. Foul. He was hammered. It's Ewing and he's gone. Dark Fader. Of college basketball. No. Yes, it is. It is Ewing. Okay. He had walked back, making me think for a second it wasn't on him, but it is obviously. Here's the play. The pump fake by Tony Red Bruin. Pat Ewing knew that he was out of control and he was going to commit the foul, and he made darn sure that there wasn't going to be any potential for a three-point play. And it's that kind of quick, violent move that has caused Pat Ewing to get a lot of bad ink, and after a play like that, you have to say it's deserved. A he great fake by Red Bruin. Leaves with six points, unofficially two block shots. Not that big a factor on the boards, but of course he spent long stretches on the bench because of foul trouble. Syracuse by one. Oh, make it two. Bruin 
a 69% man. Ewing in foul trouble all day and finally is disqualified. The third game he's fouled out of this year. The Iron Plate is back to three. Spriggs has played very well off the bench for the Hoyas, however. Very well. Gene Smith and now Eric Smith. Deflected by Bruin and coming down with a jump ball is Santa for a head to Bruin. Syracuse by five. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If it wasn't for Grecian Formula, they'd soon be calling me a gray-haired ball player. But gray hair is not for Pete Rose. So I started using Grecian Formula. Grecian Formula. It does away with as much gray as you want, some of it or all of it. And the change is so gradual and so natural looking, no one notices. If I had gray hair like this, my teammates would laugh and call me Old Man River. Hey, listen, if the gray-haired league's not for you, get Grecian Formula. Now you can shop for phone styles the way you shop for other styles. Which makes sense, really, when you consider how many different styles and colors of phones there are today. And how the phone has become a decorating accessory. You just go to any one of our Phone Mart stores, pick out the phones you want, then simply take them home and plug them in. G. No, GTE. In Atlantic City, New Jersey, Marv Albert with Ferdy Pacheco. We have an action-packed bout upcoming on Sports World. This young man, undefeated, Robbie Sims, the half-brother of champion Marvin Hagler, going against undefeated Bobby Chez. Let's get back to basketball. The executive producer of NBC's basketball is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer of basketball, George Finkel. Telecast of today's game produced by Ken Edmondson, directed by John Gonzalez. Technical director, Bruce Berkowitz. 70 to 65, Syracuse by five. Smith, after the timeout, was fouled by Bruin. Bruin got a small piece of the shot, but also gets Gene Smith. Both teams are over the foul limit, 106 left. For Bruin, that's his third. Well, Syracuse now, uh, they smell blood. They're looking for any way to, to steal, to get in the passing lane, to get a piece of a shot. Sanford just made a sensational play. Fans at home, uh, you could have heard us, I guess, but there was nothing to say. Sanford made a great steal, a great lead pass, and this 25,000 and change let you know what kind of a play it was. There was nothing we could add. James Smith to shoot two. One more coming. While we have a chance here, all of us in the sports world were greatly saddened by the death a couple of days ago of the great sports writer, Red Smith, and I know I speak for everybody at NBC Sports when we express our admiration for his work and our sympathy for his family and friends. 70 to 66, Georgetown moves to within four. 102 left. Routens pounded in the backcourt and Hancock fouled it. 59 ticks left on the clock at the Carrier Dome, a crowd of nearly 26,000. And that MVP choice is very difficult. Santa Fe has scored 19, Bruin 17 for Syracuse. Routens has 10 assists, eight points, three steals, and a goodly number of rebounds, although I don't have the exact figure. Probably sold about 75 programs, too. He's absolutely amazing. Never changes expression. Doesn't beat on anybody. He just gets the job done. He really takes care of the basketball. I'm voting for Routes. What do you say? I'll buy it. I, I don't think you can beat Georgetown unless you can handle their press. So much of everything they do comes from it. And I think it has been Routens primarily taking care of the ball that has enabled uh, Syracuse to get that ball down inside where their people can operate.
59 seconds left Syracuse 70 Georgetown 66 when play resumes it'll be Routens at the line and here is Jim Behan. He reached the hundred victory plateau faster than almost anybody in NCAA history. He has one of the highest winning percentages of all time. And he's had his club in postseason play five straight years. Back at the Checker Dome in St. Louis, this big crowd of nearly 19,000 cheering a Missouri victory, 69-55. Any comments? Well, I think that Missouri is capable of going to the Final Four, and I very seldom say that. There's no weak spots on them. They're well coached, they know their role, and they seem to have a love affair with each other. You know, they were commenting about that before the game, that the players said there is excellent chemistry, and it's something that Norm Stewart felt that he started to miss last year, and he really worked on that this season. I thought they were unselfish, and they looked for their leader. That's such a key. They know that Ricky Fraze is the guy that can get them the two points when they want it. I think he's unstoppable. So the final here, Missouri remains unbeaten, wins by 14. Now let's go back to Syracuse. Routens 83% for the year at the line, two of two today, and he builds the Syracuse margin to five. For what it may be worth in case this one tightens up, Syracuse gained a point in violation in this half, and Georgetown lost one. It may be just that close, Bob Costas. Set a sensational game. Smith to Hancock. The double pump is way off the mark. Georgetown touched it last, and that may seal the lid. Lots of time, 49 seconds. Georgetown's press is good, and they can score him in a hurry. Andre Hawkins, who has spent a long stretch on the bench. They're going to foul fouls, him. Back in, and they do foul him. Hawkins was trying to ask for a timeout as he got across the midcourt line, Bucky, but before he could, they fouled him. All right, going back to that situation last week when Syracuse very much in control of the game and they blew the first end of three one and ones in a row, let Villanova back in. And even without Pannone, Stuart Granger and Aaron Howard brought the Wildcats back. Uh, so they're in that situation now. I think Syracuse has to be very careful of who's handling the ball because after one swipe, I think Georgetown's going to grab the closest man, and it really shouldn't be a freshman like Hawkins. And that's why I'm not coaching anymore, because the freshman just stepped up there and busted it. Okay, we picked Routens as the Syracuse MVP. What about a Georgetown choice? I really think Spriggs might be the guy, even though Floyd has led them in scoring today. Spriggs kept them in when Ewing was on the bench for a long while. Agreed. It's so even that uh, I think anybody comes off the bench and gives you that kind of performance, I'll buy it. Syracuse now with the game's biggest lead. Floyd gets it inside to Spriggs, knocked away by Hawkins. Routens to the floor to try and pick it up. Out of bounds to Georgetown with 31 seconds left. So the most valuable players for today's game are Leo Routens from Syracuse and Ed Spriggs from Georgetown. Honeywell will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship funds of both Syracuse and Georgetown universities in honor of their participation in today's game. This money will go toward assisting students at those institutions to further their chosen academic fields of interest. On the inbound, Spriggs goes up strong, but there's a whistle before the shot and a Syracuse foul with 29 seconds left and the orange in front by eight, which is the game's biggest lead. One and one. This Syracuse crowd got awfully quiet. They thought it was a possible three-point opportunity, but the call was made that it was before, so it's one and one for Ed Spriggs. A 13-game winning streak is in jeopardy. The first loss in 82, a possibility. These Hoyas have not lost since November, and it's called Ice the Shooter. Jim Beheim putting a, a little time for the senior postman, retired postman, to think about just how important these free throws are. By the way, for those of you who were watching the Missouri-Louisville game earlier, which the Tigers won rather easily, the MVPs in that game, Lancaster Gordon for Louisville and Ricky Frazier for the Missouri Tigers, who are ranked number two in the country, and really put on a show for the TV audience today, evidently, at the Checkered Dome in St. Louis. Well, that, the margin over Louisville was quite surprising. Louisville, of course, a, a, a veteran team, a well-coached team, but Norm Stewart must really have them going, and now they're heading into Big 8 conference play. I've seen Kansas. Uh, you know, people want to talk about leagues. Our league is best, your league is best. And I think the, there are two things to really evaluate. Not your best team, but the balance. How good are your bottom teams and what you do against outside competition. And even that is subjective because a lot of teams in December tend to play teams that are so weak that they uh, should be staying in kennels when they're on the road. 
Sports World coming up next. Marv Albert and Bernie Pacheco will be there ringside in Atlantic City. Bobby Chez against knockout artist Robbie Sims in a scheduled 10-round middleweight fight. And then it's the Bob Hope Desert Classic. And there you see the leaderboard after four rounds. Today it's just the pros. The amateurs are done. And you'll see it on NBC, the second half of Sports World. Georgetown comes up empty. Routens, our Syracuse MVP, has the rebound. 25 seconds away from a monumental Syracuse victory. Eric Smith picks it off for Georgetown. Not a good play. Better he should let it go out of bounds. So at least get a chance to set their defense. Spriggs, our Georgetown MVP, hits the hook and then calls a timeout with 14 seconds left. Georgetown is going to have their chance for revenge, assuming they don't pull this one out in terrible fashion. Later in the season, these are conference rivals, Big East. They play a home and home every year. And then, of course, there's the Big East tournament. So these two clubs are not through with each other by any means. And I'm sure that Georgetown feels that outside the Carrier Dome, where nearly 26,000 people were on Syracuse's side, the result might be different. Well, don't tell me I'm nuts, but they're still in this ball game. There's 14 seconds left. Bucky, you're nuts. <laughs> OK, tell me I'm nuts. I've seen stranger things happen, but that was a very foolish play by Tony Red Bruin. Uh, he saved the ball to nowhere and put the ball back in a situation where his team wasn't really ready to defend. In this kind of a situation when you're protecting a lead, if it looks like you're going to get caught with a five-second situation, don't throw a wild pass. Let him have a jump ball. Give your defense a chance to get set. Make the team that's coming from behind take a few seconds off the clock so they have to work against a set defense. The only way Georgetown can get back in here is great carelessness on the part of Syracuse like that particular play. Now Routon's trying to throw it in and does to Karens, then he Got takes a foul. it back. Having trouble no getting way. out it's of the backcourt and Karens is fouled. They had a foul right now. Five seconds is eternity and they lost them. You know, Bucky, we saw the note about the closeness of Big East games on the screen a moment ago. This Big East conference, as we have the entire nation watching us now, some people outside the East might not be aware of how formidable this conference is. Some class programs, Villanova, St. John's, Boston College, which did so well in the NCAAs last year under Dr. Tom Davis. And of course, these two schools, Georgetown and Syracuse and UConn and the others. Some good ball being played in this conference. Yeah, the only reason they haven't heard about the conference, they've heard of the teams, but the conference is so new. Just in its third year, but you better believe the quality of basketball in this league. We've already made the point that they are number one in terms of conferences against outside competition, the ACC being second. And the bottom clubs are very, very competitive. They also have a season-ending tournament in Hartford. That was the first Syracuse miss from the line in the second half. Ending on Red Bruin with two seconds left. That ups Floyd's total to 20. Bruin is fouled on the inbound. Let's see if they'll call it. The clock shows triple zeros, and that's going to do it. It sets off a celebration at midcourt. Syracuse 75, Georgetown 70. A happy Jim Beheim for Bucky Waters. I'm Bob Costas. So long from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. We serve more of this land's top 100 business centers than any other airline. Fly the friendly skies.